Now you know his work, but you never see his face. He's the one taking the fall for the stars. Literally, we're talking about stuntman Eddie Braun. And there's a new documentary film that follows Braun as he prepares for the most dangerous stunt of his career. Eddie and director Kurt Matilla are here to tell us more. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Good afternoon, Kara and Mark. Thanks for having us. We're happy to have you. I got to ask you first, um, how does one, Eddie, how does one become a stuntman? Like, were you the one jumping off coffee tables as a kid, or how do you train for this? <laughs> well, uh, as, a, as a child, Evil Knievel inspired me to become a professional stuntman. Uh, a, a whole generation wanted to be just like Evil Knievel. Uh, my first injury was on my Schwinn Stingray a bicycle trying to jump trash cans, and I broke my arm, but I was like Evil Knievel. Oh my gosh, what did your mother say? <laughs> oh my, my poor mother, she was, I think I drove her nuts with all the different things. Uh, I, I just wonder, because since I have an 11 year old boy, yeah, yes, yeah so okay. Well, but this movie looks amazing, doesn't it? It, it looks, it looks uh, really very interesting. Kurt, um, you know, what's, what's the genesis? What's the basis? Why did you, uh, what, what is your love of the stuntman? Uh, where did this come from? Oh, well, I had met Eddie professionally. We had been making some car commercials together. He was the stunt driver and we just kind of bonded over filmmaking and storytelling and we enjoyed working together. And one day during lunch on a break, he told me about this adventure that he was about to embark on by jumping the Snake River Canyon in honor of Evil Knievel. And I just immediately said, you know, can I film that? Like, is anyone documenting this? And and the rest is history. Yeah, Eddie, I mean, Evil Knievel failed in this attempt. What makes you so confident? And what makes you want to, besides the, you know, the idea of succeeding, but, you know, what drives you to do this? Well, first of all, Mark, you, you brought up a word that I wouldn't use, and you said that evil can evil fail. <clears throat> I never use that word. Uh, I mean, the man inspired a generation. So uh, I just uh, felt he didn't finish what he started, but he certainly did not fail. Um, after uh, And evil can evil was a daredevil, and I am a professional stuntman. There is a difference. Um, and after inspiring me to become a professional stuntman, after over 30 years of doing stunts, I felt I had the wherewithal and the technical uh, experience to want to finish out the dream of my hero. So he, he inspired me and I got to fulfill his dream. How awesome could that be? You know, to be, it's amazing. To, to be a professional stuntman, when you say it sounds like you've got some skills, like. Do you look at something and, and break it down like, well, I have to fall here and then do that? Or how do you create a stunt? Well, Kara, you brought up a good point. Yeah, you, you have to, there's so many things. That's the difference between a daredevil and a professional stuntman. A daredevil is more like, you know, hold my beer, we'll see what happens. And a professional stuntman, uh, plans it and executes it, hopefully in a way that, that he could do it over and over and over without getting injured, where daredevils just go for it and who knows what happens. So uh, I just looked at this whole project as a very elaborate stunt sequence within a movie, and that's how I went about it. Kurt, when you're uh, directing a movie uh, dealing with with stunts so much, and it's it's the primary focus, certainly, of the movie. Is that a lot different than a traditional movie or a commercial where acting is, is the primary focus? Absolutely. You know, I think what my job was to just make sure there were cameras ready to go and just capture every moment of this adventure from uh, anything that Eddie's saying before the launch or, or during. And I think what I learned initially from Eddie working professionally after our first stunt sequence that we shot together on a commercial, I was like, this is gonna hurt. And he said, yes, stuntmen get hurt all the time. You just, you just, as Eddie said, you can't get injured. So that opened my eyes that like, wow, we should really get a window into this world because as we're all watching Hollywood films, we have this suspension of disbelief that we see these 
fictional things and like, oh, well, when that car is flipping over and catching fire, no, no one's in there and no one's getting hurt. It's like, no, that, that's not true. There are, there are stunt performers who are very committed to their craft doing these, doing these stunts for us because they love telling stories and they love making movies. And that's another part of this film that I wanted audiences to see. Uh, Eddie, we will pray for you. Um, I, I, are you nervous? I, I'll tell you what, the scariest thing for me is having a movie about me being shown. That's more terrifying than any stunt. Okay. Uh, well, thank you both for being with us, and I want to wish you luck. I hope you do make it across the Snake River Canyon and succeed the rocket jump so you can make history, and we all get to watch it because we can stream it on Disney Plus starting Friday, July 23rd. Thank you both for being here. Tara, Mark, me. thank you so much for having us. You have a good afternoon. Thank <laughs> you. Too. It's uh, amazing. It's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, you can really make a profession out of just about anything, and that just shows how challenging that must be. But that's his job. Very, you know what? To nearly and, kill himself every day, that's his job. Yes, and they <laughs> don't, they don't, I mean, they don't get compensated quite like the, the big yeah. mega stars, and they're putting their lives and, and their, their careers and their well-being on the line. Oh, my gosh. Takes a special kind of mind, for sure. 